My name is Evans and uh, welcome to this video. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at the February, March 2018 IGCCI CT Paper 3.1. Uh, we'll be doing a section of data analysis and later on we'll start to look at website authoring. Okay, so let's go straight into what we're supposed to do today. Um, so that's one evidence document. Open the file m1831 evidence.rtf. Make sure your name, center number, and candidate number will appear on every page of your evidence document by placing these details in the header. Okay, so let's go ahead and do just that. Okay, so we open our evidence document and within the document um, in the header, we are going to insert our candidate details. Okay, so go ahead and insert um, a blank three column. And um, this is because it is already aligned to the margins left and right. And also it is properly aligned in the center. So we don't have any issue trying to drag um, um, our uh, text to align it left or align it right. Okay, so that's why blank three column is the best. Okay, so close this and um, next question or next step. Um, so we are done with these two. Uh, next, save this as a word process document in your work area. So this is catching web process document and um, the file name is supposed to be this one. So at the end of the file name, just add your candidate details. Okay. So you will need to place screenshots and answers to questions in this evidence document. Okay, so let's go ahead and save it. So there we go here. Go to save as, and then in the current folder, I'm going to save it as a word process document and I'll add my candidate details at the end there. So um, then hit save, okay, say okay. So that is done. Now let's continue uh, with task two. You will prepare a spreadsheet model to calculate. So it's a spreadsheet model to calculate the cost, okay? calculate the cost of building brick walls for a construction company called Bobby's Bricks. Okay, you're going to apply the most efficient methods or formula to this model using data provided. And all currency values must be in pounds steering okay? two decimal places and all dimensions must be shown in meters and cubic meters. Okay, so this is very important, guys. Um, any part bricks must be rounded up to the nearest full number. So um, the foundation of a brick, uh, rather of a building, are called footings. Okay. So you guys who plan to study civil engineering and construction management and stuff like that, well, you should be shining on such questions like this. Okay. So uh, it's just for another inf um, information piece of information we have here, one meter equal to 100 centimeters. So usually you're given this, if at all there will be need for you to change or to convert uh, from centimeters to meters. Remember, your, uh, your dimensions must be shown in meters and cubic meters. So this means that um, if you have a dimension in centimeters, you cannot just go ahead and multiply that uh, in, or use that in a calculation you would need to convert it first of all to meter. This is the conversion factor that you'll be using here. One meter equal to 100 centimeters. Okay. So that's important. Now, um, the, I must say about this, um, this um, paper, um, first of all, when I was going through it, I noticed that it was a very mathematical paper. And um, um, for you to be able to answer questions uh, from this paper, you needed to be kind of good at mathematics and um, comprehension, um, so to say, English stuff. Huh? <laughs> okay, so um, your understanding of the question was important because if you don't understand the question, you're going to use the wrong formula and uh, consequently, you're going to get the question wrong. Okay, so mathematics, we can't throw away. Uh, and the first question is exactly. So explain in your own words, 
the order in which mathematical operations are performed within a spreadsheet. Okay, so um, it doesn't have to be necessarily within a spreadsheet, but here we're told it's within a spreadsheet. But generally speaking, mathematical operations they take a, a, a particular order. There are some operations that have got a higher order than other operations. For example, multiplication has a higher order than addition. Okay, so um, they call that as precedence. Okay? So some operations have uh, precedence over other operations. Okay, so um, in mathematics, this is very simple. You guys, you do this every day. You have what is known as paid mass. Okay, um, others call it paid mass. Others call it board mass. Um, it 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 doesn't matter. Um, but paid mass um, is more informative because um, it gives you more information about indices and stuff like that. Okay, so paid mass, P stands for parentheses or brackets if you want, and the E stands for exponential or exponents or indices, and the D stands for division, M for multiplication, A for addition, and S for subtraction. So that is basically the order in which uh, mathematical operations are carried out. The first of all, uh, the first part to look out for is the part for the parentheses, the brackets. Okay? So anything that is in the, within the brackets will be executed first or will be um, carried out first, and then followed by the exponents or the indices, power or whatever, whatever. Those are going to be carried out next, and then you have the division and the multiplication. Even though division and multiplication are at the same level, um, it's just here that they are written um, in order anyway. We could have even read it, uh, written it as PEM, um, PEM DAX, it will still be the same thing. Um, uh, because division and multiplication are at the same level, addition and subtraction are at the same level. So that kind of works out uh, the same way. But basically this is, is fine, okay? So let's go ahead and type this into our evidence document um, according to task uh, evidence document one. Okay. So evidence one, so we will say following paid mass, okay, parenthesis, parenthesis comes first, followed by um, exponents exponents or indices if you want they're one and the same things and then um, exponents and then you have um, division then division multiplication um, then you have and lastly addition and subtraction okay so that is that is basically the way um, um, the order of operation will take place you have parentheses first um, if you want you can even put brackets here okay so parentheses or brackets comes first followed by exponents or indices then division um, uh, comma multiplication and lastly addition and subtraction so that would be the order in which uh, the operation will take place okay task number two um, step number two open the files m1831 calculator.csv and m1831 bricks.csv in a spreadsheet package and examine the contents Format the files, um, the file m1831 calculator.csv so that the spreadsheet looks like this and so um, basically we want to format um, the work so that it looks, the spreadsheet so that it looks like it. Let's open the two files in question, is calculator and bricks. So open these uh, in a spreadsheet package, okay? And um, I can just enlarge this like this. Um, so basically you're just examining them. Um, and what are you looking at when you examine? For example, you're looking at for the stable structures um, for possible uh, VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP usage. Um, and so you, you, you're seeing um, a file with some in bits of information. 
So um, depending on the way the data is arranged in this file, like right now I can tell that if I'm going to retrieve anything from this file, I have more rows than columns, so I'm going to be using VLOOKUP. And um, if I had more uh, columns than rows, then I was going to be using edge lookup if I was going to be retrieving anything from this file. So just by examining it, I'm able to pick up what type of, um, what's the layout of the data in this um, sort of table, okay? So for the other file, um, if you go to um, here, this is the file that we're told to format um, um, into looking like something like this. We have a black background and we have got, um, um, we've got a scripting font, um, this one here, it's called Bobby's Bricks, okay? Um, this is a scripting font, it's more like a, a person's handwriting, like some people with good handwritings, I mean those with good handwritings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm told there are some people who've got very bad handwriting, that even when they write a, um, when they write a text message or an SMS, um, <laughs> their handwriting is bad. <laughs> Even when they write with capital letters uh, on an SMS, uh, their handwriting is still bad. I'm just kidding. Okay, so um, this is Bobby's Bricks, and this is a scripting um, uh, font um, because it resembles something like someone's handwriting. Um, that's not the, probably the reason why they call it scripting. Yeah, but um, um, we have a lot of um, such uh, fonts uh, within the Microsoft packages. And then we have the back, uh, black background um, for the headings, okay? And the headings are centered, okay? The subheadings are centered, um, as you can tell, data entry, first of all, cost calculator for um, freestanding bricks walls, and then bricks work, and then foundations, footings. And um, um, it's apparent that cost calculator for freestanding bricks has been merged, and the sales A1 to, um, um, to C1, they are also merged, but they are, kind of independent because um, um, A2 and A1, they are not merged together um, because we we have in A1 to C1, we have a unique formatting of Bobby's bricks and it's 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 using a scripting font. But in A2 to C2, it's also a unique formatting because um, it's just, um, I mean, no more, um, um, no more um, sans serif font, which is it's there. Okay, so we can create something like this. So the first thing that we need to do is um, maybe to do the background formattings. Um, so we have this to C1, black, um, black background, um, black background, and black background. Okay. So you can actually highlight them at the same time so that you don't waste so much time. Um, I'm going to make them black background and I'm going to make the text white. White. Okay, like that. Okay. And um, I'm going to... For some reason, everything else is center aligned except for Bobby's bricks, which is right aligned. So I'm going to um, um, just undo this. I'm going to merge, first of all, this one, merge and center, and then right align it. Okay. Then this one, merge and center as well. Then these other ones, um, let's just verify if they are merged and centered as well from there. Okay. So they are merged and centered. So merge, no, you can't merge them. You need to merge them as individuals. Um, merge them, then merge this one as well. Okay, so that is good. Um, then I'm just going to increase the font a little bit for these ones. Um, so um, I'm going to make them bold and maybe 12. And then I'll, I'll have, um, Okay, that looks good. Then I work around this one, find the scripting font, and it must be the largest scripting font I can get. Not the largest, but I will need to make it the largest. So there is brush, empty. Okay, that looks good. Um, I don't know if it is, nope. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I just need now to find out where exactly it is. So as you can see, it starts from where the cell B starts and ends there. So may, when I enlarge it, at least it should be somewhat closer to that. So let me just enlarge it a little bit. Oh, that's too much. Let me try to look for something else. Um, how about this one? Uh, reduce maybe to 40. Okay, that's, that's better. 
Okay, yeah, that's good. So this is also a scripting uh, font. Um, there are different scripting fonts that you can use. Um, this um, you can also use. Let me see this one. What gradient script? Okay, yeah, this one looks good. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm going just to make it 42. Aha. Uh -huh. So this one looks um, very good. Very, very good. Okay. Feels like you're designing a card for somebody. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So I've shown you guys how to um, work around some of this stuff. Now, um, the next thing that we're going to do is um, um, we're going to... Um, uh -huh. So let's see. Um, mm -hmm. So... Let me see what A1 is. So notice that A1, the um, the row height has been um, enlarged. And um, so we can also check ours to see if it is enlarged. It is indeed enlarged. So we don't need to worry about that. So for now, um, check if there is any underlinings and stuff. Now it's just verify that everything that is around here you've actually done it okay so i suppose i've done everything and let's go straight into the next step that we're supposed to work around so let me just verify also um okay i'll check i wanted to check the time for this recording so that i don't take so much time on one video um so done with this one so save this as a spreadsheet within the uh with the file name m1831 underscore uh, followed by your center number and cadet number okay and for example this 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 and take a screenshot showing sales um we're going to do this let's first of all save this so go to file save us and then in the current uh, folder just remove calculator and underscore zm556 underscore 0001 and save it as a, an excel workbook okay so now we need to take a screenshot um, showing only sales A1 to um, C26 of your spreadsheet, including the row and column headings, and place this in your evidence document. So now what we're going to do, uh, we need to get a screenshot of A1 to C26. So um, I can use the snipping tool, change the mode to um, rectangular snip. Okay, that's fine. A new window and get from here um, all the way so c26 is just about there okay and there okay so that's fine so then we're going to copy it and paste it in our evidence as evidence number two okay so uh, don't worry about resizing some of these screenshots. Um, you can just spend so much time and lose out on um, whatever time you need to spend on particular questions. You can do um, the propping out and stuff like that, resizing of the images you've placed in your evidence document at the end of the exam, okay? if time will allow. Otherwise, just dump everything in there and that's good to go. Um, so the next thing that we're supposed to do, um, done with this one, uh, what we're just supposed to do, place your name, set a number, candidate number on the right in the footer. So on the right in the footer, your name, center number, and candidate number. So insert in the footer, head and footer, and go to footer. In the footer, you're going to insert on the right side, okay? On the right side of your footer, you're going to insert your name. That's a Evans ZM556-0001, okay? And the next thing that you're going to do, um, so then you say place an automated file name, including file path in the center of the header. So this has to go in the header. So what you just need to do is say go to header. And in the center, you're going to insert path, okay? As the name of the current file, including the full path to the header of footer. So just that. And that should be good, okay? Um, next. Um, so done with this one as well, and you go with your two marks. Uh, for step four to 18, you may enter the test data to help you create your model. Okay. So, I mean, you can come up with this data depending on the scenario that you're given and then um, change, um, just check that your formulas are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Okay. Now, step number four, restrict the data entry in cells B5 
to S O D and O S O D. So capital or uppercase S O D or lowercase S O D, it should mean the same thing. Okay. Um, so we're going to also take a screenshot evidence showing um, how it restricted the data entry in cell B5, and we're going to place this in the cell uh, in the evidence document. So in cell B5, let's go ahead and restrict the data. So B5, this is B, and B5 is this one. So right here, we're going to restrict the data. So restricting data, um, this is I'm talking about data validation. Okay, so go to data, and go to data validation, and data validation, and then. Um, you are restricting a list of values because you have got S or D. So um, you can restrict the number, uh, you can restrict the decimal, you can restrict time, a date, and stuff like that. But in this case, we've got uh, we've got um, a list of values that we are allowed. So what is allowed is S comma D comma S comma small D. Okay, and that is what is allowed there. And say okay, if you come here. Notice that the values are now uh, listed there as S, D, S. So you can just select there, more like a drop-down list, um, like that. Okay. But notice how the values I wrote them. I wrote them in such a way that um, they are separated by a comma. So you cannot just come here and write S or D or S or D like that. Okay. Um, Notice how it writes it, S or D, S or D. Um, it doesn't look good, so you can't do that. So um, how data is validated, um, you you separate it by commas. Okay. So S comma D comma S comma D, small letter D. And that should be done. And we're told now that we need to show evidence of how we validated this one. So to show evidence, just come back here and pick up a screenshot of this one. So I'm going to use the snipping tool. But this time around, I need to change the mode to window snip and um, let's get a new snip and I want this window. So this is the window as evidence that I have restricted my entry. So here, I'll just um, push this down and paste it right there. Okay, so don't worry again about resizing. You can come and resize it later on. Okay, um, so next step, um, we've taken this uh, screenshot out to show how data was restricted so we go to step five restrict the data entry in cell b6 to accept only entries from the list of soil holes in the soil um, soil type table okay so uh, notice how also that um in cell um okay let's just do this so in cell b6 this is the cell here we want also to have um we want to retrieve only the soil type Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, let's come back here, restrict the data entry in cell B6 to accept only entries from the list of soil codes. So um, what we want is the entries, which these ones um, are the only ones which should be accepted here. There should be nothing else. Okay, so uh, the next thing that you're supposed to do is um, um, go to the question paper. Um, so type table and show uh, evidence on how you restricted the data from um, from this one. Okay, so um, to pick up the values from here, you can give this one a named range if you want. Okay, um, or um, yeah, you can give it a named range and you can use the named range um, to put at values here. So for example, what I can do is um, this is a selection here and uh, go to data validation. So put your cursor here, go to data validation. And um, again, it's going to be a list, but this list, the source is um, a range of cells, not just one cell, but the source is a range. So your source is this range here. Okay? And select it like that and notice that it picks up the range just as it is. Now, don't worry whether it picks up this as absolute referencing or as relative referencing. Um, it doesn't matter um, because you're only using it once. Okay, so what's important is that the cells have been referred. To. So the cell is the cell range is E4 to E8. Whether it's absolute or relative, that doesn't matter. But that's what is there. So when you say uh, like that, notice that the values are now shown uh, as that. Okay, so that is that is that. 
Um, I'm just removing that for come and test them later on. Um, so the next one is take a screenshot showing how you treated the data and then place this in your evidence document. So again, you go back here um, to the cell, go to data validation, data validation, and get a screenshot of this. So again, use your snipping tool. Uh, we need a new, um, so get this one, uh, copy it, and paste it in your evidence document. Okay, so that's evidence number four. Okay, that's good. Next, we will go to step number six. Enter a formula in cell B12, which depending on the soil type, displays the depth of the 14. So the formula should be supposed to go in B12 and um, the, um, the lookup value that we are looking out for is the soil type. And um, what is supposed to be retrieved is the depth of the 14. Okay, so this is very important, guys, um, um, if you're going to answer this. So, again, you um, they have not told you that you are using lookup value, but um, from, uh, rather, they're using uh, the lookup or, uh, I mean, a lookup function. But common sense will tell you that if you are retrieving it from a, a separate table, uh, you can use the um, lookup function. So in our case, we're using soil type, depending on the soil type, Okay, and the soil type, um, if you come here, the soil type, let me just say, okay, the soil type is this one. So depending on the soil type, we retrieve the depth of the 14. Depending on the soil type, we retrieve the depth of the 14. But notice also that um, this formula is supposed to go in, um, in cell B12. So if you come here, in cell B12 is this one. So in B12, um, we need to um, check the type of the soil and then retrieve the footing. But we cannot just check the type of the soil unless we know the code of that soil. Okay. So what we're going to do is first of all to start uh, equal to VLOOKUP. Okay. And then we'll get the soil code because the soil code is what is uniquely identifying the types of the soil. So each soil has been given a soil code. So we can use that. So um, VLOOKUP, then you have uh, B6, uh, which is the soil uh, code, and then comma, and then the table array, which is from E, um, E, E4 to um, H4, okay, uh, to H rather to H8. So that is the uh, table array. Uh huh. So sorry, I didn't select that. So just come here, select it from there, and then then you're going to say comma and then um the column index the column index is the um the integer values must be returned um where uh, of the column that you want so beginning with the first uh, column is actually column one and then followed by column two so e is one f is two g e is three and h is four so you're returning column four and you want an exact match so you return false okay you only retain true if you're looking for an approximate match or a range of values, um, um, like decimal values and stuff like that. Um, and you're comparing decimal values. If, if, they, if there's a range that is going on, then you're going to use um, true. Okay. So for now, we with this, so hit enter key. And now it says not applicable. Why? It's because we haven't yet selected the type of the source. So if we select G, notice that it returns G, it returns depth of 14 it has a 3.8 if you select this is what they're saying you can use your own test data so my own test data could be let's say here i can say s and it returns 0 0.6 i can say c and it returns one okay so that is that is the your own test data that um the examiner was telling you to use okay so that is step number six so step number seven enter formula in cell b13 which depending on the soil type displays the width of the 14. Again, this is the same thing, guys. Um, the only thing that has changed is that you are now retrieving the width, but using the same formula. So you don't even need to waste time here, guys. Um, what you just need to do is copy this and paste it right here. Um, that is the width of the 14. Paste it right here and go ahead and change the value of... Um, now, the only problem is if you, if you paste it, um, we did lock the cells so that they are absolutely referenced, okay? Um, but in that case, what I would just need to do, I'll just type it out. 
Um, the reason, um, if you copy it like that, it will adjust the sales will become relative and you need to be aware and um, change them back, okay? So in my case, um, we still use B6, okay? And we still use the same range. So if we had locked this to become um, um, absolute reference, so we would have actually um, copied the formula and just changed the column index. So that is fine. So notice also that for C, the foot the width is 0 0.8 and the depth uh rather the, the depth is one so that is there so if you change it to g you expect to have 0 0.6 for the width and you expect to have 0 0.8 for um the depth okay so that is done as well and now next one in uh, i enter a formula in cell b12 uh, b14 which calculates the length of the 14s and this is um, the length of the wall, okay, so the length of the wall plus the width of the footings minus the um, minus 10 centimeters. Now, notice 10 centimeters, uh, like I said, this must be converted back to meters because they are working with meters. So 10 centimeters converted to meters is actually 10 over 100 because um, you have one meter equal to 100 centimeters. If you cross multiply, um, you find you have um, 0 0.1 okay and um, so 10 centimeters of a uh, 100 that's 0 0.1 so um, it's the length of the wall so what is the length of the wall the length of the wall is um, mm, is this one length of the wall which is b7 plus okay so b7 plus um, you have got the width of the footing the width of the footing which is 0 0.6 okay and then minus 10 centimeters okay so or zero point whatever so um the formula is supposed to go in um in cell b14 so b14 which is here equal to the length of the wall which is b7 plus the um the the width of the 14 which is this one, 0 0.6, B13, minus, and then minus is supposed to be 10 centimeters converted to meters, which is um, simply 0 0.1. Or if you want 10 over 100, which still evaluates to 0 0.1, and you put that as your um, the footing. Okay. So that is done. Okay. So step number nine. So let me just verify. Um, okay, I'll end with step number 11 and then we can pick it up from step number 12 in the next video. So enter a formula in cell B15 to calculate the volume of the concrete needed for these footings. Remember, the volume is supposed to be the depth of the footing multiplied by the width of the footing multiplied by the length of the footing. So everything has to do with the footing. Now that we found um, the footing, um, the length, we found... Uh, we found the depth, we found the the width, we found the length. So the volume will be equal to this multiplied by this multiplied by this. Okay. And that will be um, the volume. Okay. So then enter a formula in cell B16 to calculate the cost of the concrete for these footings. And we're told that the price is supposed to be 120 pounds. Per cubic meters okay 120 pounds per cubic meters and we are, so for every um, um uh, cubic meter we have that's 120 pounds the knot is here um the footing is here okay the volume of the footing is 0 0.24 so to get the cost so we multiply equal to 120 multiplied by whatever value would be found here which is the volume okay in cubic meters and that will be the value there okay so that is done uh, with step number 10 step number 11 enter a formula in cell b19 to look up the brick name using the data from the file m1831 bricks.csv so here we are looking up so enter a formula the cell to enter the formula is b19 and we are looking up the brick name okay um the brick name using the data from the file and this is the file here. So this is what we are retrieving. Now we need to find out which one we can use as a lookup value. So now go to this same file in question. 
if you look at the different codes that are existing here, you will see that you have got different codes for um, this is C, a brick name. Um, you've got um, um, this one where you're retrieving, we're retrieving what? We're retrieving, I think, the cost. Uh, no, the brick name. Okay. So the brick name in question will be this one. We're retrieving this brick name. But if you look at these, each of them has got um, a unique um, a unique code that is representing it. But take notice also that um, you have got two M's here, which mean the same as something different. Um, I don't know if Cambridge didn't see this one, but um, uh, usually the codes, if these are supposed to be unique codes, then they are supposed to be, so let me just um, highlight this and find out something that is familiar. Um, go to data and um, data validation. Um, no, um, let me see. Go to home, uh, conditional formatting, and I want to find highlight cells that have got duplicate values. Notice that you've got cells that have got duplicate values. So a G has um, Saxon God and another G has got Georgian. And, uh, an M has got Mount Facing and an M has got Milton Bath. So there is this information that so this this is not a unique code. And if you're going to um, if you're going to um, to use VLOOKUP for this, the first letter that you encounter is the one that it is actually going to do that um, to use. Alternatively, some people they say that you can sort out the table um, in some order, um, maybe in order or ascending order or something like that. But still, that doesn't um, that doesn't answer the question, okay? Um, nevertheless, we're just going to use it as it is. Um, so we'll come here, um, brick code. Um, so code for the brick here, we'll use this value here. Uh, whatever value we're going to put here is the one we're going to be using. So here that go goes the code of the brick, whether it's M, it's T, it's S, it's G, it's whatever. And we're going to use this one um, to retrieve the name. So here, um, let's see uh, where we um, we need to choose in cell B19. So B19 is this one type of brick chosen. So equal to VLOOKUP. And the name of the, uh, the code of the brick is supposed to be here, which is B9, comma. And then um, the table array is supposed to be the entire table that we have here. Um, if you want, you can end here. Um, that's fine, but I'll end here. Um, that's still fine as well. Uh, from A2 to F20, that's still fine. But you can end here as well because what we are looking for is column two and it will still be acceptable, okay? So that is done. Then we go to there, uh, I'm returning column two and I want an exact match. So I'll go for false. Okay, and notice that it says not applicable, but if you put G here, uh, notice that it says Saxon gold, okay? So that is that is that. Um, next, maybe I can even remove this. Um, we'll come and put some values that we need later on. Okay, so that is uh, step number eleven, guys. I'm gonna have to end the video here um, so that it doesn't become so uh, too long. Um, um, we'll continue in the next video with step number twelve. And so, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, to comment, to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video shortly.